Every relationship you've ever had and every relationship you will ever have is a direct reflection of who you are. Now, when I say a direct reflection of who you are, I'm not necessarily saying every relationship you have is a person who's just like you. As a matter of fact, most of the relationships we have within our lives are the mirrors of the unconscious or subconscious beliefs that we have about ourselves, meaning those beliefs that we might not be fully aware of or those beliefs that are so casual, so autopilot that we don't look at them, we don't take the time to truly investigate them and see how they affect our external world. Now, most of us were raised to believe that Our external world is simply something that's happening to us, right? That everything out there is out there and we are right here. Therefore, our relationships are nothing more than that external experience that the people who come into our lives are random and happenstance, that the people that we end up having relationship with are just random and we couldn't help it. And, you know, we just simply either fell in love or we just simply fell into a friendship or whatever it may be. When in reality, every person that we've ever attracted was attracted through our belief about ourselves in some shape or form. And every relationship that we have maintained has been a reflection of that very same thing. And I tell you this is true because in most uh, situations, in most situations where you have somebody who, let's say, says that they continue to attract uh, toxic individuals in their experience, right? Think about this. If somebody comes to you and says, oh, my ex was a narcissist and the other ex before that was a narcissist and the ex before that was a narcissist and the ex before that was a narcissist. Think about that. If they were true narcissists that they were attracting, right? Classified, diagnosed narcissists, like all of these traits and they went in for the actual evaluation. If they were all narcissists and this one person happened to be attracting them all, there's a reason for that. Like if you looked at the entire population True narcissism, the the classification that we have within psychiatry, that true list, not everybody. As a matter of fact, there's a small part of the population that is that. So if you're continuously attracting one part of the population out of all these people that you have rendezvous with, especially in like your small town or whatever it may be, that is a sign, a telltale sign that you are a magnet to a specific type of individual. Now, that might not be easy to accept. And that might sound as if it is victim shaming or victim blaming. And that's the words we sometimes use to also stop ourselves or negate ourselves from taking responsibility or taking the power back within our own experiences, right? And so I say to that, when you find yourself in a situation where you're continuously in toxic relationship after toxic relationship, it's not to say, oh, it's my fault. I'm so bad. You know, something is wrong with me. Like, I'm so stupid. I shouldn't be doing this. It's not necessarily to start to actually shame yourself, but instead to investigate why is it that this continues to happen so you can find a solution. And so I repeat this once again, every relationship that you have and ever will have and ever have had has been a direct reflection of something that you believe about yourself or you believe about life at a whole. Example, if I have a belief system that I am only worthy of affection and love when I do something, which was an actual belief that I used to hold for decades of my life, right? If I believe that I only have value in somebody else's experience when I'm doing something for them or being a certain something for them, and sacrificing myself for their greater good or their quote unquote greater happiness, then I will always attract individuals in my life who make me feel or demonstrate behaviors that reflect that belief back to myself. So I might find somebody who doesn't show me affection until I do something for them, right? Until I clean a house or until I buy them something or until I take them somewhere, till we go on an experience or whatever it may be. I may continue to attract individuals who don't feel appreciation or don't share any type of appreciation for the things that I do because I have a feeling of a sense of worthlessness without my utility, without my doing for somebody else. And so again, that belief will attract a certain type of individual. If I'm a people pleaser, this is a fantastic one. If I'm a people pleaser and I give, give, give because I have a fear that people will leave me if I don't give, if I don't continuously pour my entire self out to please you, to get your validation, your acceptance, if that is who I am or that's the energy that I give, the energy that I emit, right? That's the energy or the emotion that I am uh, uh, radiating at or am resonating with, then I will attract into my life takers, 
Think about it. Energetically, I am in a fear state. I am in a fear emotional state. And therefore, I'm going to attract somebody else who's in a fear emotional state. And a person who's a taker is as fearful as a person who is a people pleaser. I promise you that. You might think they're just more of a villain because they're the ones who are benefiting from it. But unconsciously, we are also benefiting from it as a people pleaser. Think about it. The person who's taking feels as if they never have enough, right? They feel as if they need to take more and more and more to feel as if they're whole. You believe you have to give, give, give in order to feel as if you're whole. And so you meet your match there at that low vibrational place. You attract everybody in your experience through the emotional state or the emotional space that you are emitting, that you are giving out. So if you are paranoid, you are more likely to run into an individual who is still in purses, let's say. The paranoid or the fearful individual is usually the one who ends up in the situation that only adds to that paranoia. Or even a case that is probably more, um, more relative in your situation. Think about a dog, right? You could have a dog walk around in a park around hundreds of people and nothing happens. Yet, all of a sudden, one day, it's around a certain person who's just so frightened of dogs or who has a lot of anger and animosity around dogs and that person gets bit by that dog. Now, think about it. Why did the dog not bite everybody else? You could say to yourself, well, he was just having a bad day that day or just something happened that day. But what you don't understand is that person to be in that very same place at the exact same time that that dog was having his bad day, there had to be something that brought them together. And you've experienced this in your life in multiple ways that you probably enjoyed or liked where you're like, oh, I was just thinking about this person. I saw them in my dream and then all of a sudden they called me or, you know, I was just I was flipping through a yearbook and I saw their face and all of a sudden they sent me a Facebook message. And in those situations, we take ownership and we enjoy it, right? We say, oh my goodness, this is magical. This is amazing. But when it happens on the flip side, we want to say it was just random and happenstance and I'm powerless in that situation. And so I am here really to give you back the keys. I'm here to hand the power back to you to remind you that these are not things that are merely circumstances or situations and conditions that are happening to you, but they're actually happening through you. You are the attractor of your life. You are the manifester of the physical experiences that you have in this life. And you may think to yourself, well, if I'm manifesting something and another person is, then how could we both be manifesting and that doesn't mess up? Well, that's how attraction works. Like attracts like. That is the law of attraction. And you can ask any physicist in this day and age, they will tell you this, right? Any quantum physicist, any just regular physicist, it's not just metaphysicians who are talking about this now or who are proving this now. So if I am in a specific vibration, or if I'm in a specific, let's say thought process, that's an easier way to understand it because all is vibration. So if I'm thinking a specific way, I'm going to bring into my experience somebody who is thinking in that parallel way. So if I'm thinking lack, 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 I'm going to uh, manifest or attract individuals into my life who are lack, lack, lack. If I'm thinking abundance, 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 I attract into my life people who are at abundance, abundance. So that's why when they say like the rich get richer and the poor get poor, that's why that's a relevant topic because those who are always in a poverty mentality and a lack mentality are attracting to themselves more lack, lack, lack. The person who is in abundance mentality uh, manifests or attracts to themselves opportunities, opportunities, opportunities for more abundance. Whether they have zero pockets in their, uh, zero dollars in their pocket, zero pockets in their dollars, zero dollars in their pockets or a million dollars in their pockets, right? That being said, we have to be vigilant and we have to be aware. We have to be absolutely honest with ourselves when it comes to the people that we are attracting into our lives, the relationship dynamics that we continuously attract into our lives and the patterns within our relationships because that's going to be the key of the transformation that must take place within our belief system about ourselves. Now, shout out to my co-host Maha on the Healer Circle podcast. We just dropped the first episode. By the time you watch this, maybe it's like 50 episodes in, but we just dropped the first episode. So make sure to go watch that ASAP. Anyway, she often speaks of how at the bottom of everything is self-worth, right? Everything we do, everything we experience, etc., is based within worthiness. So the the lack or the the things that we don't have within our lives, the relationships that we desire, the money that we desire, the happiness and joy that we desire, the things that we hold ourselves from getting into or allowing into our experience are based in the the worthiness that we feel or the lack of worthiness that we feel. And I completely, absolutely, 100% agree with this because even for me, when I started on my healing journey, 
I understood that, oh, everything I'm doing is because I want to feel as if I'm worthy. Everything I'm doing is to prove my worth to somebody else. And so when we start to dig, we start to realize that the bottom of everything truly is that layer of like, I am worthy or I am not worthy. Like that is the belief. And for me, I was raised in, you know, fundamentalist Christian household where a lot of the messaging was you are not worthy. You are not deserving. You are a broken person. You are a sinner. You are fallen. You're this, you're that. All these messages in a young person's mind will start to create a narrative that I truly am not deserving of the goodness of life. And so when you don't believe that you deserve good, you will never let in the good. When you don't believe that you deserve good relationships or you deserve to be treated with respect, you deserve to be treated with love, you will only allow individuals to treat you like trash, period. There's no way around it. You cannot surpass your belief system unless you choose to consciously change your belief system, unless you become aware of that belief and start to do that work to reverse that belief system. Now, we're not looking to beat ourselves up because we not found this out, right? We're not looking to shame ourselves even deeper because of this. It's not like, oh, I've sinned against, you know, righteous God. This is just a simple realization that you were unknowingly creating a life situation, circumstances, and interaction that you did not desire However, at a unconscious or subconscious level, you were attracting these things to yourself. Nobody else was doing it to you. And that's, again, not to say that these th- you deserve to have experiences. It's not about that. Some people may think, oh, well, does that mean that, you know, that person deserves to be abused or they deserve to be this or that? No, absolutely not. I'm not talking about deservedness here. You deserve the absolute best. But if you believe that you deserve the worst, you believe that life is untrustworthy, you believe that, you know, life is to be feared, then that's what's going to manifest. It's, uh, it's indifferent. Universal principle is truly indifferent. And for some, that's hard to hear at first, but eventually becomes extremely empowering because you start to see that you are the one selecting, you're the one choosing, you're the one creating. And once it's conscious, it's a beautiful thing. But when it's unconscious, you have a mixed bag, right? You got some beautiful things and some completely destructive things that are manifesting within your life. And so you can carry this into any aspect of your life. But again, I wanted to focus on relationships because this is one of those fundamental things that most of us believe we have no control over. We believe that it's just happening to me. And I'll give you an example, even in my, you know, my relationship right now, beautiful, beautiful relationship. I'm so thankful for it. And the way it came together was just, again, me understanding universal principle and allowing things just to unfold from my own internal belief that was building. But anyway, there was a moment in our relationship when I made a decision like, man, like there were sometimes I was having certain behaviors and it was very, it wasn't very frequent, but it was becoming more frequent where I was essentially stopping myself from enjoying moments or enjoying the moment, right? And I didn't realize it was like like small sabotage. Like I thought it was just me having to process different things, you know, because, you know, real deep guy, whatever. So I just got to process this and that. But what I didn't realize I was actually doing was I was stopping myself from just enjoying and simply having fun, right? And so when I started to realize that and actually happened like an overnight experience where I started to contemplate you know, a series of events that had happened. And I realized, man, like here she was enjoying herself. Then I got in this funky mood, allowing myself, I chose that funky mood. And then it brought her into that place. And now we're both in that space. And I said, I don't want this anymore. This has happened a few times, but a few times is more than enough for me to realize something and to allow myself to let that thing go. And from that day forward, I said, we're just going to have fun. We have a good time. And I promise you ever since it's just been laughs. It's been joy. Like it's been in the midst of like, circumstances like external circumstances you would not believe that you could find joy of we have found absolute joy right and so i say that to say this to you right now you are the only individual responsible for what you are creating in your experience your own experience what somebody else does with theirs is their own you know prerogative that's their own life you can choose to be an example for them. You can choose you know, to, to be an uplifter, but you can't choose for anybody else, but you can always and you are always choosing for yourself. And again, it's all based within your beliefs, which is the thoughts that you continue to repeat until they become your truth, until they start to manifest or project out on this thing that we call the physical or our physical reality, right? So 
when it comes to reversing this or reversing these toxic relationships into healthy relationships, it really comes down to making a decision. Like I had to make a decision that I want to be happy more than I want to be, you know, distant or I want to hold on to those old aspects of myself. Like, and sometimes it might not be that easy to let go because I've been so used to, I've been so used to fixating on the past. I've been so used to holding on to those things that, you know, truly never served me in the first place, but I thought they did. I believe they were protecting me. I believe they were serving me. I believe they were helping me, right? They were helping me to navigate my life at a specific certain point. And basically making the decision to let that go means letting go of a person that I used to be, letting go of a person who I thought I was. And that's a huge decision to make. Like that's a tall order for anybody, to be honest with you. And so I understand if it at first feels so difficult, it almost feels impossible. But I promise you that there's nothing more worthwhile than making a decision, a conscious decision that you're going to step from the place that you are into the place that you truly desire to be. I promise you that there's no more liberating experience in your life than making that decision because everything will start to change. When you start to make a decision that I'm going to have healthy, happy, dynamic relationships that I am. I'm deserving. I'm deserving of the absolute best. Repeating that to yourself in a multitude of ways and feeling it, getting yourself in the emotional experience of it, choosing thoughts that lead to emotions that are empowering, choosing thoughts that lead to emotions that bring you into your purpose, that bring you into your light, that bring you into your power continuously. That is what is going to change everything for you. Nothing has to change on the outside for you to change on the inside. It is the other way around. Once you make a decision to transform from the inside, from within yourself, everything in your external world has to shift. Everything has to transcend. Everything has to become as you say or as you speak it into existence, as you feel it into existence, as you focus it into existence. Every relationship you have can be absolutely beautiful, magnificent, spectacular, sensational, but you have to make the decision that that is what you desire more than being a victim, more than being, you know, or getting your attention from individuals who see you as, you know, woe is me or you poor thing or those who pat you on the back because of how much adversity you've been through. You got to be willing to let go of that story in order to step into your new story, in order to step into the true story, period.